I asked my friend Matt Weber to write a reimagining of the origin of Superman. Made an alternate origin story to Superman. Well, I'll just let him tell it. Superman, I think, is probably one of the first superheroes ever made. God, are there yeah. thorns over here? Uh, I also think he's one of the most boring superheroes. He's practically invincible. He's got such an unshakable moral compass. There's never any internal conflict with him. Batman has some darkness to him. Spider-Man is just, you know, he's just a, like a teenager. They're human. Superman would be like a, a hero that we, us men, could aspire to be. That's still boring because... Yeah. It's unattainable. What did you do to uh, the origin story to make him not boring? I don't know if it necessarily makes him less boring, but I think it does. <laughs> um, he was only found by humans, but yeah. so I was thinking, well, what if he was found by wolves? Maybe you should uh, read the origin story then. Oh, well, should I read it right now? Right now. Okay. Yeah. No one had seen a wolf in Lowell County in over 80 years. So in a space capsule containing the last surviving inhabitant, of a distant, dying alien world crashed there, no one would have expected that the first life forms it would meet wouldn't be the humans typical of the region. The wolves were recent arrivals as well, refugees from a series of wildfires in the mountains to the west. The small patch of woods where the capsule came down was a temporary retreat for the wolves, hemmed in on all sides by farmland, prefabricated developments, and the ubiquitous smell of human settlement. The Alpha couple feared they might have to turn around and take their chances with the wildfires again. They had already lost a member of the pack. So when the capsule fell from the sky and incinerated a large section of the woods, the wolves believed it was another wildfire. They evacuated and found themselves minus another member, the Alpha male. In the woods, a fire raged. The Alpha female could hear the plaintive, weak cries of her mate faintly over the barrage of crackling wood. Swallowing her fear, she headed back into the woods. She came across a long, smoldering gash where entire trees had been reduced to blackened stumps. The ground itself had been tilled, not unlike much of the surrounding farmland, if it had been plowed by a red-hot blade. Through the stench of burnt wood and hot earth, the alpha female detected another scent, something more acrid, like when lightning strikes the rock face of a cliff. The male lay in the middle of the blaze, burned and panting. Although she tried, the female could not get close. The heat was too intense. The male's mane smoked. Even if he could get to his feet, the fire surrounded him. The female yelped in frustration. Near the male lay a metallic object. The female didn't know what it was, but it looked like something a human might make. It smelled hot as a brand. It even glowed. Despite its immense heat, something was moving around inside of it. The entire object rocked back and forth until a young human emerged from it. An overwhelming need to run, get away from it before another adult human came hit her like a cold splash of water. She took cover and watched the young human stumble out of the capsule and step directly into the blazing fire. It walked right through the flames like it was nothing more than a radiant fog leaving behind smoldering footprints. It walked over to the male without fear, without caution, and without malice. The male kicked his feet to escape, but he only managed to budge himself a few inches. He nipped at the human, mauled its outstretched arms, but the human didn't react, didn't stop. It gathered the male up in its arms and lifted him. The male was easily five times as large as this human, but it carried him like he was a mere pup. The male struggled, but the human held him tight. He howled for the pack. Then the human did something strange. It let out a long, high-pitched howl, an exact imitation of the male, except several decibels louder. Its howl blew through the fire, uprooting the flames and extinguishing them. When it was finished, the fire was gone, and the woods were silent and dark again. Though the female kept low to the ground, the human found her, like it could see right through the shrubs she hid behind. It headed straight for her. The female bolted headfirst through the undergrowth. Behind her, she heard the telltale sounds of something pursuing her, the sound of two legs pumping effortlessly through the dense foliage. It was gaining. The female shot out of the forest and disappeared into the surrounding corn stalks where she lost track of her pursuer. She ran blindly through the corn rows. She regretted leaving her mate, but her fear got the best of her. The smell returned, the unfamiliar smell. She caught it just in time to stop herself from running headlong into the human and her mate. The female backpedaled into the corn and collapsed. It won't hurt us, her mate said, still hanging limply in the human's arms. How do you know, she said. It's the smell, he told her. 
It isn't human. It set the male down and stepped back, allowing the female to approach. What is it, she said. The male didn't know. It came from somewhere else. Just like them, it didn't belong here. It wasn't a wolf or a human or anything they'd ever smelled before. It was something more. The female stood and faced the alien, eye to eye. Its deep blue eyes gazed back at her. It was the smell, she realized. It smelled good. Well, thanks for writing this story, Matt. Thank you. I may ask you to write more in the future. I hope that's all right. Oh, that's okay. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, Do I have to not, leave now? I don't know. Do we go on to the next video now? I, no. That, oh, we have to. I, I'll just leave. Okay, see ya. Yeah. Thank you to my friend Matt Weber for writing an awesome reimagining of the origin of Superman. I hope there aren't any wolves out here. Uh, if you'd like to go back to the beginning of the playlist, you can click on the big annotation right over there, or you can go to the next video or the previous video. Now, I...